Let's talk about one of the secrets to creating sustainable, predictable cash flow in the self storage business, and that is setting up your capital expense reserve fund correctly from the start. Let's talk about that today. My name is Mark Helm and I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self Storage and I'm the creator of the Quick Start Academy and the Quick Start Academy houses the self storage boot camp that I do that takes you from wherever you are all the way through to putting your first self storage facility into service. You can find out more about it at creating wealth through self storage.com. But today let's talk about how to set up capital expense reserve funds. And let's talk about capital expenditures in the self storage business. So if you're considering getting in the self storage business or are in the self storage business, one of the attractions is there's very few cap ongoing capital expenses and the few that are are predictable and you know when they're going to come. So think about office, think about retail, think about multifamily. In storage, you don't have appliances. You're not repainting units when people move out. You're not even creating a vanilla box for a tenant to move into. In essence, you've got a steel wall and a concrete floor. But there are depreciable capital items on your self storage facility. And if we budget right for them, what happens is ongoingly that other than your loan payment and a reserve fund we're going to talk about the net cash flow is distributable there's very few other capital expenses that will ever happen we had a sixty thousand dollar sign blow down no it wasn't really sixty thousand but that's what it costs to replace it and yes we did upgrade it but the day the month that we replaced that sign with our ten thousand dollar deductible insurance deductible that month we did not miss a penny in distribute in distributions to our partners why well because we have a modest reserve fund set up in place let's talk about how to create that modest reserve fund so in the world of self storage there are a few depreciable items uh, so I'm going to assume you have a normal fabricated self storage system uh, what what are some of the items that are capital items that are going to need to be replaced over the life of a hold well you have HVAC units and your climate control and in your office area you've got your office area or retail area if you have one you have fencing, you have security, cameras, wiring, you've got paving most likely or blacktop, sometimes concrete drives, you've got doors on your units that are going to need to be replaced at some time, you've got people driving trucks who probably aren't that good who are banging into your buildings periodically, those are capital items that are going to need to be replaced to get the buildings back in shape. Now those are just some of the basics. So how in the world do you budget for them and set a reserve fund up? Well for us it starts in the due diligence period. When we're getting our inspection one of the things we do is we get what is the anticipated life expectancy on the major mechanicals, on the light packages on the buildings, on the HVAC units, how many are there, what's the life expectancy, what's the roof look like. If you maintain a roof system, a metal roof system on a fabricated storage system, that roof system ought to, life the, ought to last the life of the building. If you're replacing screws when the seals are broken, I mean, other than storms coming through, those roof systems will last a long, long time. So as we're doing our due diligence, we get what is the life expectancy of the major mechanicals? When was the last time it was resurfaced? When was the last time it was repaved? Uh, and we 
budget, what's the cost of doing those and when do we think it's going to need to be done? And we create a budget for the capital expense items. And we know if, if we've got 10 years left on an HVAC unit and the HVAC unit is $7,000, we know each year how much we need to be, be saving for that HVAC unit. So we get a budget in place. I'm gonna give you a shortcut in a minute, but we get a budget in place. Then we look at in year one, how much of that budget do we anticipate needing to be spent? In other words, do we need to pre-fund that reserve account? Very often on the deals we're doing, we are doing value add plays and there's usually a construction component or we're borrowing money to do upgrades. Very often year one capital expense items we include in that budget. So we're not having to pre-fund it. We just start funding from day one on stabilized properties. Now if we're doing a lease up or new construction, typically we don't start putting the reserve fund aside until we hit at least profitability and for us I'm defining profitability as being able to pay your operating expenses and your debt service from the income from the storage facility. Once we hit that point, that's when we start our reserve fund for that facility. Until then we either have to put money in or we're using raised equity for it or borrowed funds. Now I love shortcuts, so here's a shortcut if you're particularly in your preliminary performance. And I learned this when we started putting conduit loans, uh, basically non-recourse permanent loans on projects we were doing. What I saw was that they used a per square foot number. And I started going back through our budgets and sure enough, our budgets and their per square foot numbers matched identically. And what, they, what I saw was for a capital reserve fund in the storage world, if you set aside anywhere from 12 to 15 cents per square foot, that's a good reserve fund. That's kind of, of a shortcut that you may use. So if we have an older property with a lot of deferred maintenance, you might be closer to the 15 cent a square foot reserve fund. If it's a newer property that's been well maintained, you may be a little closer to the 12 cent per square foot reserve fund. That's per year. But if you set those reserve funds up using those numbers, you ought to be in pretty good shape. Interesting note, and when I'm looking at doing repairs and maintenance, it's almost identical. We end up spending between 12 and 15 cents a square foot on yearly repairs and maintenance, which is an operating expense item, as opposed to a capital reserve account. Now what we do is, not that you have to do this, but we literally cut a check of one twelfth of, let's say, 13 cents a square foot. We put a monthly reserve fund into an account and we put one twelfth of our property taxes into that account each month before we make any distributions. We have a separate account for it. You can suspend it in an operating account, but we just literally take it out of our operating account, place it in a money market account, and there it sits till we need it. Now once you've got a reserve fund set up, we pull on that for all the capital expense items. And here's what's great about self-storage. There's very few surprise capital items that are gonna hit you. And it would do, usually that reserve fund will more than cover it. It's rare if ever that we have to pull out of operating distributable income to pay a capital expense item. That's one of the things I love about self-storage. Your cash flows are very predictable, but it starts setting that and setting a good reserve fund up so you don't have to pull out of your operating cash to spend on capital expense items.
So it starts at the very beginning. It requires a little bit of discipline, not much. Set that reserve account up, create that budget. If you don't want to do a budget, use a per square foot number, but set that up and if you put money in that reserve account each month or each quarter however you've got it set up you will rarely if ever have to pull out of operating expense that's why self storage is so great do this and you increase the probability of hitting those cash flow numbers that you projected on your performa so thank you very much my name is Mark Helm. I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self Storage, and I'm the creator of the Storage World Analyzer. That's the financial analysis tool that we use as we're creating our cash flows as we're looking at a project. Literally for us, once we go through the due diligence period, that 10 year cash flow page, those are, for all practical purposes, our yearly budgets we're that confident in the numbers that that program creates. So if you're not using it, I invite you to look at it, storageworldanalyzer.com or creating wealth through selfstorage.com, hit the Storage World Analyzer tab. Thank you very much. I look forward to being with you next week.